Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll walk you through the updated auto attack build of Arcane Master in PvP. This build has risen to become one of the top tier options for magic damage dealers in PvP because of the introduction of the new scepter of Shadowy Wind weapon, added sources of spell crit, and a series of buffs to the runes and skills of Arcane Masters. The long range auto attacks of AMs now have the ability to proc multiple spells like Tetra Vortex, Lightning Meteor, and Chain Lightning, which can deal significant amounts of spell crit damage. Despite being a glass cannon with low mobility, AMs can be difficult to shut down thanks to their white barrier skill. This guide will cover everything you need to know from stats, skills, runes, gears, cards, upgrades, and battle setup in order to optimize your AAAM's performance in PvP. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, let's take a look at the important stats to upgrade. For attribute point distribution, a lot points first on decks to instantly cast Tetra Vortex, which has an 8 second variable cast time. After that, you should balance these three attributes for boosting your damage output and for increasing your raw magic attack, Agi for increasing your attack speed and wind element damage, and Luck for increasing your spell crit damage. In order for your skills to deal spell crit damage, you must have equipped one of these cards and headwear that boost spell crit chance. Personally, I prefer having a spell crit chance between 40 to 50%. The other stats you should upgrade to further boost your damage are as follows. There is no one size fits all approach to choosing which stat to upgrade and by how much, as each stat's effectiveness may vary per player depending on your gears and the enemy stats. Up next for skills, here's my recommended skill point allocation. For damaging skills, your auto attacks deal neutral magic damage and has fairly low magic attack multiplier, thus it's not necessary to increase your AA damage. Most of your damage would come from the skills proc by your auto attacks which are as follows. Soul Strike which deals neutral magic damage and has low magic attack multiplier. A Light which causes each loss on enemies while auto attacking with Flame Heart. Tetra Vortex, which is AM's strongest single target burst damage skill. Chain Lightning, which is a single target wind magic damage skill that can bounce to nearby enemies. Lightning Meteor, which is an AoE wind magic damage skill that has an 80% chance to trigger Chain Lightning. Electrify Field, which causes HP loss through damage on enemies, which can be procced by wind damage skills and Storm Gust, which is only optional if you want to inlay a Storming Knight Star card in your weapon. The buffs you should place in Prepare for Elite are a site for revealing hidden enemies, Energy Code for reducing damage received and boosting your magic damage and ignore MDEF, Frost Diver with Ice Tomb Acer Rune for a 65% chance of continuously restoring more than two-thirds of your total HP in PvP in 9 seconds, Amplify magic power for increasing magic skill damage and one of the four elements randomly by 20%. Radius radiation for increasing auto attack and casting range by 25% and AoE magic skill damage. Recognize spell for increasing M pen and summoning all elemental orbs. And white barrier to protect yourself from all damage except ghost damage. As for element balance, it's better to cast it after prepare for elite to get the highest possible damage. For instance, if your wind damage is at 138%, casting element balance will make your earth, water, fire, and ghost damage 138% as well. I'm not particularly fond of using flame route in PvP since it requires a fire orb to be cast, so it's not practical to be grouped with recognized spell in prepare for elite. The important passive skills of AMs are Increase Spiritual Recovery and Soul Drain to help in SP region, Elemental Enhancement and Element Regeneration to gain Wind, Earth, Water, Fire, and Ghost Element Orbs while auto-attacking which can increase the damage of the corresponding element, Status Vulnerability to increase your final magic damage to enemies under Burn, Freeze, Stun, or Bleed status, Unlimited for a chance to skip skill cooldown and cast delay, increase MPEN, and obtain elemental orbs when auto-attacking or casting attack skills. 
And last for the useful debuffs, we have White Imprison to immobilize enemies, make them only vulnerable to ghost damage or tetra vortex, and cause HP and SP loss. Stasis to prevent enemies from using magic damage skills, and auto attacks which is a good counterplay against another AM. Spell casting banned for increasing cooldown so it's good against skill spammers like Saints and Dorams. And Frost Nova for an 83% chance of freezing all nearby enemies for 15 seconds with HP loss damage if they resist being frozen or the ice breaks. Here are my recommended skill point allocation, highlighting the essential skills to get. Before I proceed to the next part of this guide, I'd like to give special thanks to Smile1 for helping make this video possible. Smile1 is an international game top-up center which has been in business for almost a decade. They have hundreds of partnerships with game developers including Ragnarok Mobile so they can offer cheaper BCC and monthly premium versus in-game prices. Smile One Top Up is available in many countries across all servers, and there are various payment methods you can choose from. Here in the Philippines, I can pay easily via GCash, BPI, or 7 Eleven outlets and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smile One's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the skill and attribute nodes which are important for optimizing your AM's performance in battle. For Advanced Runes, First, get a Soul Vortex S rune with activated second and third line effects and high first line value. Second is a Thunder Lightning S rune with a high value on the second line to increase the chance of automatically releasing Chain Lightning while doing auto attacks. Third is the Heart Vortex Star rune with activated third line for the White Imprison plus Tetra Vortex combo against tanky supports. Fourth is a Cretaceous Barrier S rune with third line effect to be able to insta cast all skills while under white barrier status. Having a high value on the first line effect will be beneficial if you do not have a Moonlight Flower Star card. Fifth is another Prison S rune with high value on the first line for a higher chance of putting enemies inside white in Prism. Activating the third line is also good as Tetra Vortex will deal more damage against Ghost Element. And for the last slot, get a Frost Cursed A rune with max value on the first line to achieve insta cast with stasis. As for the attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment and cards. Since the new tiers and shadow equipment update will be coming soon, I'll be including my recommendations for both ancient and synthesized equipment. First for weapon, a plus 10 or higher, Scepter of Shadowy Wind is the best in slot as it has 40-50% chance of triggering Lightning Meteor when doing auto attacks. It also significantly boosts your wind element damage the more agi you have. Your weapon should be enchanted with Magic 4 or high status resist. As for weapon cards, you may inlay two Shelter Pet Star cards for 35% spell crit chance. If you have other sources of spell crit, then you can switch out one or both of these cards with those that boost damage. For offhand, you can choose between Demon Hunter's Trophy or Divine Revelation for Ancient Offhand and Creeper's Agreement or Peak Platter for Synth Offhand. Your offhand should be enchanted with Insight 4 and inlaid with Mark Card to prevent getting frozen when casting Frost Diver with Ice Tomb. 
for armor, I recommend getting Other Shore Patrol with 20% elemental damage as main armor and Magic Light Cocoon as shadow armor due to its set effect with Mayfly Shoes that has a 10% chance to turn the enemy's armor into water element when doing auto attacks. It should be enchanted with Magic 4 or High Status Resist and inlaid with Nightmare Star card to reduce the cooldown of White Barrier from 12 to 9 seconds. For Garment, the best in slot is Classical Robe with 12% skill damage for Ancient Equipment and Divine Feather Clothes for Synthesized Gear. It should be enchanted with Arcane 4 or High Status Resist and inlaid with either Zenubia for bigger damage or Devil Squid card for a sneakier playstyle. For foot gear, you may either use Order Guardian or Tristan's Grease for ancient foot gear and Mayfly Shoes for synthesized foot gear due to its set effect with Magic Light Cocoon. It should be enchanted with Arcane 4 or High Status Resist and inlaid with either Moonlight Flower Star card for chasing and escaping or Edgar Star card to prevent getting staggered and rooted. For accessories, there are plenty of options for both Ancient and Synth accessories which can boost Magic Attack, Ignore Death, and M-Pen. Your accessories should be enchanted with Anti-Mage 4 and inlaid with Witch of Calamity card. For headwear, there are lots of options to choose from but here are my top picks for each slot. For head, use a high refine which is oaf due to its unique effect that can increase your final magic damage against medium size by up to 20%. Then place an abnormal status immunity card or any of these cards for boosting damage. For face, a high refine epic spirit lightning with inside 4 in chat would be my top choice to significantly boost your wind damage and consequently increase all your elements with element balance. For mouth, any of these gotcha items would be good for boosting damage or inflicting abnormal status on enemies. For back, you may use a plus 6 in Kamiya's movement for more spell crit chance or fate wheel to reduce the cooldown of skills and try to get inside fourth enchant. And for tail, get a beautiful ensemble with arcane fourth enchant to maximize skill damage. Take note that you may also use GVG Rental Gears, God Artifacts, and 6v6 Team Competition Headwear for specific events. Aside from enchantments, you should also invest in your equipment's refinement, enhancement, and reinforcement as they provide additional defensive stats. Up next, let's discuss the other upgrades that you can invest in to further boost your damage. For pets, you may use any of the following pets depending on your preference. For guild buffs, max out first your wise blessing for magic attack. For guild prayers, the following attack and element chips can increase your damage output. For oracle mirror extract, there are plenty of options for both attack and death attributes, so just select any of the following based on the stat you are lacking and your budget. For ancient relics, there are several possible options so just choose depending on your playstyle and budget. Valkyrie's blessing for FTP players. Lord of Vein if you just want an overall increase in damage, Horn of Unyielding to prevent being one hit killed by burst damage, Horn of the Watcher to attack hiding enemies, Secret Cloak against Magic Reflect users, or Elf Spicolo against cast time debuffers. For multi job, you can unlock the following classes to get more int, agi, luck, and dex. And for Adventure Handbook, just focus on collecting items and achievements that grant magic attack and HP when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's discuss the general battle preparation and skill setup. First, make sure that all your buffs are in Prepare for Elite. Then place the following skills in your manual and auto skill bars. Before entering the arena, prepare these consumables that will help improve your DPS. At the start, buff first using Prepare for Elite and then cast Element Balance. When the team fight starts, make sure to stay behind your front line or support while launching your auto attacks towards the enemies. Your auto attacks will then proc damaging skills and can even inflict an abnormal status. 
you may also insert manual touch of vortex while auto attacking when the target's HP is already low. For targets which cannot be killed quickly with auto attacks, you should put them first inside white imprison and then cast touch of vortex for higher damage output. If you still cannot kill them with this combo, then it might be better to just run away. When you're up against AA classes and other magic DPS, you can block their attacks first with stasis before attacking. You have to be extra careful though since you will most likely be a priority target for opponents. A slight misposition, a cast time debuff, or a negative effect may get you instantly killed once the 5 second duration of white barrier is done. Thus, you need to ensure that your white barrier's cooldown is shorter than its duration to protect yourself from long-range pokes and burst damage 100% of the time. As a glass cannon DPS, it's crucial to have a reliable full support saint in your party that can grant suffragium with sacrifice Ode Rune to reduce the cooldown of white barrier and fate pray to protect you whenever your white barrier is down or got dispelled. Other good support companions for AM are Need Hug with their Savior's Flower and Soulbinder with their Soul of Wizard and Soul of Ninja. Arcane Masters have a lot of good utility skills, so you need to familiarize yourself not only with their effects but also with the cooldown, skill delay, and the correct timing of each skill. Alright, so that's it for my Arcane Master Auto Attack build guide. I hope that with this guide you'll be able to achieve success in PvP and GVG. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any question or suggestion or additional tips for our viewers. Alright that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.